so the outlaws is an absolute blast uh it's also quite the real moving series but how did it sort of come about well, um, when I was growing up, my parents were involved with the community service world. Um, they supervised uh, people who had broken crimes, had broken the law in various ways and were doing, you know, 100, 200 hours of community service. And they would tell me about some of the people that, that came through the door. And it was always an unusual mix. It wasn't who you'd expect. There was a, I remember there was like a, 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 an American businessman who had got caught doing a DUI, who had stayed in England to do community service. There was a kid actually I went to school with called Dave, who came through several times. Um, Dave was the world's laziest criminal. He once um, got caught in a house stealing the TV and the, the homeowners came back and they went, Dave, what are you doing? And he went, I'm not Dave. And they went, yeah, you are. You live next door. <laughs> he couldn't even go like a block over. He literally was stealing from his next door neighbors. And I just thought, what, a, what an unusual mix of people. Like, it, you know, the, there was like an old guy who used to steal vegetables from people's gardens. I just thought, what a strange world this is where all these unlikely people would meet and have to, to, to work off their, their hours. And I always had that in the back of my head as an idea for a show. And so I teamed up with this guy called Elgin James, who's most well known for the Mayans MC. It doesn't on the surface seem like an obvious collaborator. He's got a very different life story to me, but we had a lot in common, shared sense of humor. And we've tried to create something that has sort of drama and humor and a thriller aspect and, and sort of put all these flavors in that, that we like and that we enjoy. So what was it like looking or coming up with the look of the series? Because it has this really great movie like feel to it, unlike a lot of other, you know, TV shows of a similar ilk. So, I mean, what was it like really finding the look of that since you're also involved in the director's department on this one? Well, I take that as a huge compliment because one of the things, you know, I ended up setting it, we, we went around the houses, we wrote an original version actually as a film script, um, which was originally set in LA. But um, we felt like with a, when it was a movie, it was too, there were too many characters and you couldn't explore them all in depth. And that's why it seemed to work better as a TV show. But I think we always imagined it with a sort of cinematic edge to it. And we liked the idea of taking these quite suburban characters, but giving it a bit of a cinematic scale. So like, for instance, the music, I don't know if you noticed, is very kind of Sergio Leone influenced kind of Western, even the title of the show, The Outlaws. We like the idea that in, in, a, in a movie, it would be kind of seven magnificent, you know, cowboys on horseback riding across a sort of desert plain. And in this case, it's just sort of seven suburban people wearing high-vis tabards. Um, and so but we like the idea of trying to approach that and give it something epic, even though their lives are very small. And um, so we tried to approach it cinematically and, and give it some scale and some sheen. And also I think Bristol where we set it, which is my hometown, is a very visual city. It's, it's full of color, it's got a lot of street art, it's very hilly, so it has a lot of depth, you know, a lot of scale. And, and it's sort of not somewhere you see a lot on screen, but I think it has a lot of sort of visual flavor to it. So since you mentioned the scale of the series, uh, I know that we already have a second season in the works. And so since this did, as you mentioned, start as a film, I mean, did the idea for the second season sort of come up while you were writing season one, or is that something that came up while you were filming? Well, we started uh, shooting and then about 10 days into filming, we had to go into lockdown because of that first COVID um, outbreak. And then we were just, uh, we had, everyone had to down tools for a long time. And I kind of get bored quickly. And I sort of said to, to Amazon and, and, and the BBC, look, could I, could I write another season while we're in lockdown? And miraculously, they say yes. So when we came back, we did two series back to back um, and it allowed us to sort of rewrite series one to accommodate series two, which often, you know, you don't get the opportunity to do. And so we could plant seeds that we could pay off later. And um, and so, yeah, it feels like it's quite it's, you know, we've managed to map out an arc of sort of 12 episodes that hopefully takes you somewhere. And when you end up at the end of those 12, I don't think you'll quite know how you got there, hopefully from the beginning. But also, as you say, mentioned about this sort of cinematic thing. And one of the things for me was being able to throw in you know, little nods to movies that I love. So we know we have a little kind of heist in each of the seasons. You know, I, I love those heist movies, Ocean's Eleven and things like that. And th throwing again, like a little sort of suburban version of a heist in there or a home invasion, kind of like uh, the first Halloween movie, you know, sort of Michael Myers stalking around the house. We sort of threw a bit of that in there. So it's nice, I think, to take those kind of genre conventions and throw them into this world that you, you know, this provincial uh, town that you wouldn't normally expect to see that stuff. Um, uh, so that's been a lot of fun. Well, I think you've done a phenomenal job with the first series. I look forward to when we get to see the second one and uh, spread the word about this one. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat. I really do appreciate it. <laughs>